it is very interesting how you present the historical perspective of friendship with prominent people like fidel castro shi guerrero right brothers abraham lincoln joshua speed jesus his disciples and others can you explain if there are any reasons why some good friends become suddenly enemies thank you asha for this question i made a mention of this above uh, and did not explain in detail sorry about that perhaps i should now there are a couple of points here one as you just mentioned there are very good many people in history uh, who were remarkable friends and stood by each other in pain and pleasure success and failures joys and sorrows you respect you of any possible division like caste religion or any possible segregation for example uh, che guevara is from argentina and fidel castro although from cuba in fact uh, he is of uh, spanish origin but both of them so thick friends and no internal power or authority uh, from outside could break into their friendship abraham lincoln was helped by joshua speed in the initial stages of his life which abraham lincoln remembered all through his life and made a specific remark even after he became the president of united states there are some good examples in tamil nadu as well tandai periyar arinar anna and kalina karunanidhi were good friends although anna and kalina later drifted away from periyar and formed the dmk party still they had a huge respect for periyar in fact both of them and their dmk party are so grateful to periyar until this day the other uh, example uh, is uh, amma jalalida and chinnamma sasikala uh, they were very good friends they stood shoulder to shoulder to each other in almost everything whether it was success or failure joy or sorrow accident or pain from the start to the end more than 30 years i think i know many of top officials in india who had hugely admired their friendship in fact they were surprised that these two had uh, utmost loyalty and a bond at the center of their relationship uh, i have mentioned all this in my uh, book volume 2 namwalvil ulavial uh, part 2 uh, bagam 2 uh, that has come out you know all the available formats including paperback ebook and audio and they are all available throughout the world you can access them either by putting my name on google or clicking at the description box uh, of this video where details can be found <coughs> secondly the opposite of a loyal and devout friendship which is bitter jealous and bubbling enmity that one develops either by oneself or develops at the prompts of uh, somebody someone like robert clive whom i mentioned first influencing the loyalists of nawab of bengal in order to defeat him now why and how some good friends turn out to be terrible foes even to the extent of betraying or killing the very own friend with whom they shared a lots of things in common there are uh, there could be so many reasons but i tend to focus on uh, psychological ones it could be firstly mere jealousy or envy that Uh, this person is in a privileged position and i am not so this person is in a way hindrance to my greed and uh, wish uh, and so uh, there is a need to get it of him or her uh, and occupy that person's position uh, that's what we find in the story of uh, julius caesar and his friends uh, as we all know julius caesar is known for his administrative ability who invented the present calendar system as well as the police force his own friends started to stab him then he saw his own friend brutus joining uh, the perpetrators to kill him the famous statement he made was you to brutus the same thing happened to jesus when when betrayed by his own friend judas the ltt chief mr velupula prabhagaran was cheated by his own most trusted aide and friend karunagaran all these are examples of jealousy and envy or at the center of friendship turning to be hatred breeding enmity now we notice this sort of situation in our day to day lives too many have expressed their disappointment about how their own friends suddenly became so ungrateful that they even started to work against them i know while many of my close friends were happy with my growth a few back in india but just to stop even talking to me just because i became whatever i am now 
might be that I had the opportunities to study in well reputed universities and grow and so on and so forth. Now, the question is, what are the psychological process around this? Could be that these people, in addition to what was mentioned above or uh, with jealousy or envy, might be also that they are exposed to continued stress, depression and anxiety, that the chemicals in their brain got altered, that they cannot function as normal as they were in the past. Remember, according to neuroplasticity, our brain can change in size and structure. And so continuous stress exposure to continuous stressful exposure to situations can mess up the thinking. And so they become easily subject to any brainwashing. These are the people who tend to develop high levels of either inferiority or superiority complex. They tend to think in black and white. They also maintain high levels of also perception and belief that as truth. For example, the caste or regional or linguistic affinity that some people uh, create or people going on to YouTube saying completely nonsense and then have the followers to endorse them are the good examples for this. In neuroscience, there is a very powerful statement. Uh, neurons that fire together, wire together. I really love this. And in fact, that's true uh, too. If we constantly and consistently say something totally stupid as a noble idea, then uh, those listen to it, believe it, uh, that one as truth eventually. In fact, it gets registered as truth in their head. Somehow, I suppose, intuitively, Dr. Ambedkar and Periyar, much before the modern day neuroscience spoke very heavily against this sort of false perception being justified to be a divine truth. For example, the caste system being justified, uh, one, the higher and the other belong to a lower, a lower caste. Um, I have seen this even among the well-educated and qualified people, not only in India, but also in Britain. Now, these people are, according to neuroscience, called people who suffer from emotional illiteracy. They are most likely to suffer from lots of anger and relationship issues. They tend to uh, sway like a reed in the water. They change sides so quickly. Most of the time, uh, they identify themselves with those in power and authority, no matter uh, if they, uh, whether um, they, they follow people who are uh, good. And these sorts of people can very easily become friends as well as uh, the opposite uh, enemies. Nandri.